The gospel this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 20. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, put it under the bushel baskets, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So how many of you think that we're about doing very small things? Nothing of great consequence, except sitting on our south ends and listening to a boring sermon once in a while. Hmm? How many of you think that's all this is about? How many think, well, it might be that plus paying, a, you know, a little money once in a while? My friends, we are called to be the kingdom of God in this place, in this time, <clears throat> no matter what is going on around us. No matter what idiot happens to be in charge of whatever government we might have. No matter how many crooks there are running our country. No matter <clears throat> how much bad stuff is happening to good and ordinary people every day, we're called to be the kingdom of God here and now. <clears throat> it is no light calling. And yet it can be easy in a way. But it's costly. It bears a cost. We bear a cost of being disciples. Now this text from the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is set forth by Matthew as kind of Jesus' opening statement in the great call that he's giving to us as the people of God to live into this kingdom. We've read last week, we heard the Beatitudes, right? Have a good attitude, no. This follows. And what is Jesus saying here? He says, you are light. Well, it just so happens that contemporary science has figured out that he was right. That in fact, everything from lead to hot air is made out of light. Little tiny light packets. So you look at the person next to you, and that is a whole pile of light. What do you think? Yeah, yeah look at that person go, there's light there. There's light right there and there and there and there and there and there. And there. Look at these packets of light. Aren't they wonderful? Now science calls them quanta, right? We're made up of zillions of these little quanta but it's packets of light. 
So it turns out that old Jesus actually got some science right. Hmm? It's pretty cool. Now, the church has traditionally said, now that's all a nice metaphor. You're supposed to shine your light on other people and be good to other people, and, and that's a good thing. And that, that's not wrong. But it certainly shrinks that down, doesn't it? It doesn't have that cosmic character that I think Jesus was talking about. Quakers, Quakers figured this out. Quakers, the Society of Friends said, we are, they referred to the divine as the light, and that was, saw an invitation of everyone to enter the light, to bring others into the light, to live into the light, to be transformed. They got it right. And our brothers and sisters in the Eastern and the Orthodox churches have a very developed understanding of what living into the light is all about. It's not just a metaphor. They celebrate people who have exemplified becoming light bearers. Light bearers. And we all are called to be light bearers. Now, I suppose you've walked into a room and there's somebody there. Maybe it's a hospital room. And you can hear, you can feel that large flushing sound, everything going down the drain. Believe me, I've been depressed enough to feel like that myself on many occasions. You just feel like, uh. But there's something else. You might go into a death room and see somebody, and they are a light. They are shining out with brilliance. There's just this incredible light about them. That's the power of God's light at work. And every one of us is invited to be a light bearer like that. I think <clears throat> it's what Jesus was offering us. It's a message about how we can enter into holiness. By holiness, we mean a right relationship with God and becoming part of transforming the world. And in fact, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was on to this. He was on to this in one of his famous sermons, number 24, Matt. In fact, he focuses on this text for Wesley and Jesus Religion that's only ideas and intellectual propositions really isn't religion at all. The spirit of Christ is what enters us when we allow this through the acceptance of Christ as our master in all things. The spirit is light. It resonates through our whole being, our bodies and our souls. The light becomes visible to those who know it and tantalizing to those who do not. It comes out and invites people who sense that they are living in some kind of darkness. The light works to change and to animate us with the Spirit. And somehow, at a subatomic level, we move with the source of light, so our very being is transformed and reorganized and enlivened on a psychological level, and perhaps below our consciousness as well. <clears throat> the light opens us up to move forward in the darkness, not with <clears throat> a set of rules, but an opening up, a gradual Revelation of a deep truth founded in love. And as we move into this love, this light, we discover that the divine is guiding us, and we gradually let that divine light take over. Now, most of us pray to God, <clears throat> and we want a complete GPS system that tells us where we're going and how we're going to get there, how many minutes it's going to take, 
which roads to take to get there. <clears throat> In Vermont, when you use one of those things, they run you on these old roads that are, are closed in the winter. They don't plow them. People are always getting stuck up on the mountains because they try that. And that's what happens to all of us. It's not that God isn't guiding us. It's God's not guiding us the way we think we want. Instead, God tells us, put your left foot here and your right foot here, one step at a time as we move forward. People in a 12-step program have got it right. It's one day at a time. It's one hour at a time. It's one decision at a time. And God is working with the Holy Spirit within us to move us. Now, how many of you here like to dance? Huh? Come on. Come on. You can fess up. Some of us like to dance. Some of us are good at dancing. That's probably a different group of people. Right? <clears throat> but when you dance, you learn the steps, usually, right? You, you learn what you have to do, and sometimes there's a pattern you have to move around the room, and you can learn all that stuff, but if that's all you learn, you can't dance. Because you've got to let the music transform you. You've got to let the music come into you and move you and shake you and turn you around so that you are alive in the dance. And that's how the Holy Spirit works. That's how the light works in us. Huh? <clears throat> that the light comes into us and it starts to move us and animate us. And, and, and as, the, as Scripture says, we become alive in Christ. We, this Spirit, this light starts to move us and we, we discover we're not dead. Yeah. We discover we're actually alive. It's no surprise that the Quakers and the Shakers out here used to dance in worship a me, as a means of becoming deeply grounded in the light, the divine. And we use music, right, because it wakes us up. And I thank God every Sunday that we have such a wonderful music director and dedicated people who share their voices and the instruments and, uh, and sing and I get three Sundays out of four to be with our African service where there is singing every time you turn around. It is good. It is wonderful. Sometimes it's in English, sometimes it's in French, sometimes it's in Twi, sometimes it's a Fante. I don't know, but it's beautiful. It's alive. Amen. Amen, right? This is, this is how... We embody this light, how we carry this light. It's nice to put a candle up on the counter. I like candles, okay? I'm not against candles. But we're supposed to be beacons of light. And it doesn't take, you know, a 12-volt battery to do that. It takes our hearts, our bodies, our minds to do it. We're meant to bear light into the world, to be a beacon on the hill, to live that light into the world. And it's not, friends, going out and telling people you're a bad person. <laughs> no. It's about sharing the love of Christ. It's about living for justice and for peace and for mercy and for kindness. It's about letting the light work so that the great commandment of loving God and loving our neighbors works within us in our daily lives. And guess what? We're supposed to hang out with people that others think are bad. It's a good thing because, generally speaking, I qualify in that category. <laughs> right? <clears throat> we hang out with the wrong people, like Jesus did. The ones some people called sinners. The ones who were, had physical defects or psychological defects or whatever else people said. As we do, we find the love of Christ grows. 
We have to live the Beatitudes by discovering humility and kindness and patience and gentleness, compassion and hope in Christ and sharing that with one another. And John Wesley was pretty concerned because people said, oh, I've got that light. But they didn't do anything with it. They went to the prayer meetings and they gave their money and, you know, that was it. And John Wesley was pretty harsh. Pretty harsh. He said, that's no way to be a Christian. That's no way to bear light. You've got to do those things, but that's not the deal. The deal is you live it. You get out there and you do it. You have a faith that has action that follows from your faith. It doesn't just happen once or twice a week and you sit down and you do a, a recite a prayer or two or even read the Bible. It's about how we live. And I think Jesus agrees. Being a light bearer is not about being a religious snob, but living in love with the most rejected in the world. It's not about judging people, but sharing the light of love in our daily actions, words, and ways so that our very coming and going shines light in the world. Jesus told us we're not to be like those who pass judgment on others. Scribes and Pharisees, right? Now, scribes and Pharisees are not bad people. We need to get that clear. They're not bad people. But their lives are stunted. That they, they tend to focus on getting the right judgment and applying it to you and me and everybody else. Not all Pharisees, but a lot of them. And oh, Methodists, we can be Pharisees, can't we? We can tell you that that guy over there with a the bald head, he's not got it right, you know. But I don't think Wesley had that in mind. I don't think Jesus had that in mind because that's not the business we're in. We're in the business of shining light, shining love, caring for one another, walking with one another. And as we live daily... In a culture where religion is viewed with suspicion, and it is, talk to anybody under 40. What do you think they think about organized religion? Bronx cheer, right? Pretty much. Why? Because they say we're all a bunch of hypocrites, pompous jerks. And unfortunately, many of, many of them are right about that, right? Not you, of course. But a lot of organized religion works that way. But when we let the light of Christ fill us up and work through us and to shine out, we have authentically then lived into our faith. And we can love those who even distrust us, who are skeptical of the faith, who, th who are tired of hypocrites and jerks in church. And they go, well, you're different. And I look around this room and I see faces and I know you're different. You're not that sort of person. You're the kind of people who are prepared and do love. You're the kind of people who carry that light out into the world. You're the kind of people who share the love of Jesus without being judgmental and cruel. You just love people. You care for them. You take the steps of justice and mercy. Hmm? The kingdom is happening here. The kingdom is happening here. Thanks be to God. Amen.